Welcome everyone. We are in week five, GitHub for beginners. My name is Dua Abdel Fadi, and I will be your facilitator for today. I uh, want to welcome everyone here. And uh, our uh, our uh, meeting today will be recorded uh, and you can uh, find the record on our YouTube channel. Please sign up in the Etherpad. You uh, can find the link in the chat. And please answer the icebreaker question. Our icebreaker question for today will be uh, what the, uh, uh, share something from nature that has taught you or brought you uh, joy recently, perhaps a flower, a view, a photo, a scent, uh, uh, anything you want to share. Uh, for me, the sea, uh, make me uh, happy. Uh, so uh, one of the things I want uh, to make sure you know is uh, our code of conduct, community participation guidelines. You can find it in uh, line 56. And if you experience or witness any acceptable, unacceptable behavior, or you have any other concerns, please report uh, uh, if you uh, have any issue, as uh, a report an issue involving one of the organizers, please email us. The poll is untranscripted. Please turn on uh, your video uh, off if you would prefer to off your video. Uh, also, you can follow the transcripts following the link or, uh, on the top of the Zoom screen. Uh, our breakout rooms. Uh, will be uh, speaking and writing, indicate by editing your name on Zoom and uh, add W for written reflection uh, based on ex uh, exercise in based breakout room and S for spoken discussion breakout room. This will help us assign you to the breakout room is that, uh, with the format or uh, of your choice. Even if you are off with the pause, Please choose one of the options for uh, this poll to help us assign you easily uh, to one group. So we uh, will start with you uh, with uh, GitHub for collaboration. You, how you? Shukran, Doa. That was very, very good. Uh, we appreciate you kicking off the call. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, I'm just going to share my screen just to tell you a bit about what the call is about today. Uh, and so we'll do the panic and the find the right screen and share. Can you see it? Okay, I've got lots of nods. Thank you. It always is really helpful when you can do the expressions uh, so that I can get that feedback and know everyone's awake-ish. Look, we're, we're not blaming you if it is 6 a.m. because you're in Argentina or anything like that. We don't mind if you're a bit sleepy. Anyway. Uh, we are going to be covering GitHub today uh, with the idea that we um, we use it as a tool for collaboration. Um, so we are week five. Uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but if you can, I'm just sort of highlighting the pink, the very first pink skill up call. Um, and we offer a few of these on some of the mentor mentee meeting weeks. Um, this is the first one. If you are here, uh, we hope that you will get the chance by the end of this to start by making your very own website by the end of this call. Um, but the idea is that we're going to give you uh, a basic useful collaboration skill. It doesn't matter uh, whether or not you actually use code. Uh, GitHub was designed for coders, but it's actually great for collaboration no matter what background you come from uh, and super useful as well. So the aim for this call is to share your project using an online GitHub repository. Um, and we have some learning objectives. By the end of the session, you will be able to create a new GitHub repository. Um, so first bit of jargon, repository. Basically, that just means a GitHub site, place to store your things. Create a readme file, which we've talked about in previous, uh, previous calls. Learn how to write in Markdown. Uh, so it's like a basic tiny, tiny bit of code that you can use to format um, when you're writing. Manage issues and labels. Uh, so this is a way of collaborating with other people. 
um, make a make a website. This is the most useful thing that you can come out of today. By the end of this, you can have a website that says, "Hi, this is my website. Am I not awesome?" Uh, and you can. We'll also talk about ways to collaborate using pull requests. Uh, plus, you should be able to figure out where to go next after this. Uh, and that is everything from me. It's just a super brief introduction. So I'll stop sharing. And uh, is it Berenice next? Yeah, any questions at this point, folks? Super, Berenice, over to you. Yes. Oh, I shared the wrong screen. Great. Stop sharing. And I start again. Um, and I just share. I don't want to share my full screen, otherwise I cannot see you, but I want to see. How do you share with a slideshow without uh, sharing the full screen? If I if I do the slideshow and then share screen, I can choose the slideshow still. Does that work for you? Um, no, because if I do the slideshow, I don't see anything anymore. I do see <laughs> it's my full screen. And that is the issue. Um, well, so if you try, I mean, if when I clicked uh, on the link, I found, found it. I found something. I found the presenter mode. If I use the presenter mode, I can I can share my screen there. That should be better. Can you see my screen now? It looks beautiful. Good. Thanks a lot. It's and then you see my thousands of of Firefox. Um, uh, tab open. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Berenice Batty for the one I didn't met. So I'm one of the co-founders and, and directors of OLS. Um, because I, I see some faces I didn't see until now. I was only on the first call. Um, but yeah, I miss some faces. So welcome for the GitHub introduction. Um, it would be, it's a long, long, long uh, number of slides. Sorry for that. I hope I will try to make it as interactive as possible and try to make sure that you gain something outside of, I, at the end of, of this call. But yeah, GitHub is a lot of things. Um, so let's start if my screen, what's going on? Great, what's going on? I have no idea what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> great, sorry about that. You you see all the slides <laughs> running. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, did you click on the <laughs> link that automatically plays the slides? No, it should not. <laughs> and I cannot stop that. Great. Welcome to the fail of, of how to, to... <laughs> I have no idea. Um I will try to do something. Get okay. okay. Close so, that and can start again. Okay, let's start again. Sorry, again. So let's start again. I, I think I will not share the full. I mean, I, you will see all the slides, and that's all. And I will do it in a not presenter mode or anything because I don't know what's going on there. Sorry for that. Um, and it's a big slide deck, so it's why it takes a bit of time for loading and my computer doesn't look like to have Zoom, Slack, uh, uh, Git Slide, uh, Google Slide open, and there's so many things in parallel. So that's why it's a bit slow. Maybe I can close some stuff. Don't worry, Berenice, we, we will get through this. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. That's why I loaded the slide deck before. I know it's a big one. So uh, again, let's start again with GitHub introductions. So hopefully uh, we will manage to do a GitHub introduction now. Uh, so everything, most, so references uh, and links, I share that first slide. Then you, if you are interested, you can already uh, click on that. The link to the slide, what, what's going on? I didn't move anything. Uh, great. Um, you can find uh, some references um, uh, on the first slide. Uh, description of, of GitLab branching training materials from uh, Malvika. Um, and uh, we will use today uh, these GitHub links. We will share that again. No worries. 
again when we need that. It's just uh, you, there is also a, ch a cheat sheet for Markdown. Could I have moved that slide also at the end again. Um, so collaborative documents. Uh, there is a lot of challenges in developing collaborative documents. For example, uh, the fact that uh, there is asynchronous and conflicting edicts, locations, time zone, and versioning. So we all develop some collaboratives and we got, I don't know if you got that, but uh, when I was writing my first papers, we got thousands of versions of the papers sent by emails like version one, version two, version one, uh, with edit of uh, someone, and then you have conflicting because someone sending the same times and and and, it, and, and yeah, then you have to 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 merge the different versions and it start to be complex. How do you do that? Do you solve that? So I know Google Docs helped a lot, and all the other collaborative documents helped a lot to improve that. But still, there is a lot of of way or and and challenging in collaborative developing collaborative documents. So one thing we can use is also what is called a repository. It's not just for, uh, for it's mostly developed initially for codes. So how do you develop codes collaboratively? So you have what is called a repository. You already mentioned GitHub repository, but just remove the, the names GitHub in front and just keep in mind repository. It's like a location, a folder in your, in your, in your computer where you can deposit some files that are related to a project or uh, a community or something. And what you can do is, uh, so this is a slide from the Mozilla Science Lab. So it's a visualist from that. I'm not sure if you can see my, um, my cursor there. Can you? We can. Okay, you can. Okay, good. Um, then you see you have some file um, that you add. So it's in, in green here. You can edit some of that, some of these files where, this, where you see this pencil. And then when you do a collaboration, you can have what is called a difference, uh, differences. So uh, in that highlight, what are the differences uh, done by the edit in green with where you add things and in, in, in red when you uh, um, you remove things. So that is a bit the idea. Um, and then what is called revisions and versions, you have that where uh, you do that manually, you say, okay, it's version one of my, of my paper, for example, version two, version three, but there is automatic way to do versioning. So every time you do, um, you, you say, okay, this is a specific versions. You have revisions where you make, you have these changes that uh, at, uh, top on each other's um, with plus uh, where you add stuff, you minus, you remove stuff, you just change a, a sentence or a line of codes or something. So that is uh, the, the evolution of, 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 a, of a file. It can be collaborative or not um, of a document. But when you do that, as I said, so you, you can have different cases where you have, okay, work copy one, work copy where you do a filter, work copy where you do a count or version one, version one modified by X, version one modified by Y. Um, how do you keep track of that? How do you control the versions? So how do you do you version controlling? That is the, the idea to keep track of the different versions and the evolution on the time of the different versions. We know that, uh, for example, uh, Google Docs or um, uh, Word, you can keep track of the versionings already. It's, it's a thing that you do where you have this history. Uh, for example, here you see, I can see the history of the change of the slide. That is already version. So version control, you control the different versions and the evolution of the history of your documents. And, and then one way, when you have version controls, the advantage of that is you can go back in time. So you say, okay, I have version one, version two, version three, version four, version five, six. But now, okay, I went back to something in version three. So you can, with the advantage of the version control, is you can go back in time and see, uh, reapply some changes or go back to change it. Maybe there is something that were uh, left over that were working in version three, 
uh, then you make some changes and, so, and, and the thing doesn't work anymore. So you need to go back in time in version three. So that is the idea of also the advantage of, 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 of version control is the way that you can go back in time. So version control, as already mentioned, is a management of change called revisions to a file. So it can be, as I said, just as, uh, just in the names of the file. So with version 1.0, 1.1, it can be with uh, tools like Google Drive, Dropbox, or Google or, or Microsoft Words. It can be with advanced tools like Git that is used in the back by GitHub. So it's a local version control systems. And changing in, in the revision or version uh, associated with a timestamp. So that say, okay, at these timestamps, this is the version that we have. And details with what have been changed and who changed them. That is also important, the tracking of that. And why did you track that is also something you can add. Not always in Google Docs or in, in Microsoft Words, not everything of why, but in Git, you can have an information of what is this change about. So you comment your changes. Um, next slide. Okay, it's a duplicated slide. Okay, great. Um, and we can do that with GitHub. So we can collaborate with GitHub. Um, GitHub will store this repository for you and give you an interface for interacting, collaborating with, with different people with that. And where you can, as I said, comment on that. So here, um, for example, on the first case, the, the Fox commented that they removed the persistence commit. And then the Dragon fixes, uh, made some fixes for the widget documentation. And then it looks like a bird. Uh, I did uh, update the widget interaction and, and screenshot, but that are comments from, it's a sort of, of documentation of the changes and the evolution of the changes that makes it easier for people to collaborate together. So they know they can follow what's, what is happening and, and, and not just by following what is going on, the changes in the file, but also looking at the comment that the people did, why they did these changes. And that is also really important. In, in a lot of, of, um, of collaborations because you, you don't always have the time to check every changes individually. You may want us to, to see a report of, of the changes globally, not with the details. And what is GitHub? Because we already mentioned several times GitHub. What is GitHub? Uh, so GitHub is a big platform um, where, it's a, a previous screenshot. I think the, the GitHub in the, the first page of GitHub is different now, but I prefer this one. So I took this, the old version of that. So the previous uh, um, landing page of GitHub was where the world builds software. I really liked it. It's not just software, I would say. Okay, we can remove it, but not just software there. But it's like a, a big platform where people can drop repositories and store repository, repository are hosted for people to collaborate together. I'm pretty sure that it's not the best uh, um, definition of GitHub, but it's how I feel it's, it is. And to be honest, I use GitHub every day. So it's my, I love GitHub. So I use a lot of GitHub, um, really, really a lot. So I'm, I'm totally biased there. Um, so as I said, GitHub hosts your repository or project online. It helps you to work with collaborators, contributors for your project. It provides a web interface for version control. It can be also used for project management and communications. We will uh, we'll show you that quickly afterwards. And it's useful for any project where there is a group of people working together. It doesn't have to be code based. It doesn't have to be a really a software bit. It can be just a community, a small website, anything that where you need people to work together. So pressings, please, um, if you don't have a GitHub account, go to github.com, create an account using the sign up and login. And one thing I will ask is, um, uh, can is there anyone that doesn't have a GitHub account right now? 
I need a few minutes to, to create that. Just to give me an idea how long I should wait. If you need a GitHub account, uh, please, ah, how can I say this? Because I'm afraid that if I ask you to do that, then it will, it, it will in, in few minutes, will disappear and I will not have no idea who has, we needs to. Can I suggest um, maybe ask the other way? So Nico has put up um, a little green yeah. check mark to say that he's done it. But, but I'm just afraid of doing that, that they will disappear in within ah. two minutes. That is why I was asking the other way to say, who needs to have a few minutes to, to create a, uh, a GitHub account? Can you give me a, what, what could be a nice icon, emoticons for that? The time I found the emoticon, you would be, have created your, your, your GitHub account. Um, <laughs> it's also, I don't have the full view, so I'm sorry. Um, so please, okay, put a thumb up or a, a green check if you have a GitHub account. That would be faster, probably, maybe now. So I see only one plus one or check mark. Uh, if you want, it's okay. Three. Uh... I have three uh, check mark. Five, six, great. It's growing, it's growing. Eight. I um, miss only two person, I think, and that's all. Um, do you need any help on creating a GitHub account, or is it okay? Amongst the participants, uh, Ed in the chat, uh, we have a GitHub account. Mm -hmm. I just cannot see, the, uh, okay, I can see the chat right now. Got one, got one. So I need, uh, there is only Fatma Omar that I don't see if it's yeah, okay or not. But okay, I, I will continue then right now, quickly. If you need anything, any help, please write in the chat and hopefully uh, Doa or, or you, you can answer the question if needed. Good, thanks a lot. Okay, um, so you have a GitHub account, small exercise now. You will create your first GitHub repository. Great. Um, so what is a GitHub, uh, GitHub uh, repository? So a repository, as we already mentioned, is just like a folder. It's a project where all your files will be. It can be online. It can be on your computer. A repository is like a folder. You put stuff there, and it's a repository. Um, so how to create a, a, a repository? What you do is you go on GitHub. I think that is the first things. I go on GitHub, so you go to github.com. You have something that will open like this, um, where you have repository on the left, you have a home, you can follow people if you want. It's also a social platform. Can, yes. can you zoom, zoom in a little bit? Yes, sure, sure. I mean, I use, yeah, good. Is it better? Uh, maybe one or two more. You've got a big screen. <laughs> yeah, I need a big screen. Merci beaucoup. You're welcome. Um, and so the first things you want, if you want to create a new repository, you click on the top to create. You have this plus cross button here. You click on create new and you select new repository here. And then you can create a new repository. So you can give it a name. Uh, what is the name we are supposed to give? 
friendly collab party. Okay, let's do that. Friendly collab party. Yes. And what is the next step? That so I want to make it public. So you can choose to make public or private repository. Private, uh, by default, I don't think you have. You can do private, um, but if you are uh, associated with the university and your university is, you, you should be able to have some, you can ask for educational account or something like this and get a uh, possibility to get private repositories. Um, that is uh, things we can. But yeah, so if you make it public, you can also provide some already initialized repository some, with some files, but today we will not do it. So you, you type your name, you do friendly collab party here, you put public and you can click on create repository. So I will just do that again. Um, so you go on the top, you click on create new, new repository on the top is a plus, you type your name here, you put, make sure that it's public and then you can click on create repositories. Um, can you, can I have some feedback if it's okay or not for you? So remove this green check and add it again, or I don't know, uh, make it a plus one if it's, uh, <laughs> it works for you. Remove the green check and put a plus one if you manage to create a repository. And you should have something like this. I've cleared all of the green checks. So anyone okay, now thanks. are new. <laughs> Good. So either a plus one or anything that is there. So I got some. Good. Some people it works. Good. Good. Thanks. So congratulations. You created your first GitHub repository. It was not, it's, it's okay, it was. Um, and so what you have is when you are here, you can see the, the, the interface of all that. So you can, you have your GitHub repository that you can access. So here, my, my GitHub username is debatu, and then you have the, the name of your repository that you just typed here, and you can always access it. So it's accessible for everyone right now because we make it public. Um, if you click here, you can, on the top, you have, again, if you click here, you go back on the main page of the repository, you have your, your link here to your user profile, and you have a, a, a different things in the interface. The first things you have is this code. If you go on the code, it will uh, uh, orient you toward here. Currently, it tells you somehow that you have nothing there. You have no files, nothing. It's quite empty. Um, and it will uh, tell you, explain you how to, to get new things, new files inside or import code or pushing. But here, if you see, it's a lot, it seems like a lot of things you can, uh, you have to do with using the command lines, but we will do it. There is ways to do it without the command line. So we'll do that later after that. And here you have different um, uh, tab for your project. For example, the settings here that uh, tell you, okay, you can change the name of the repository if you want later, because, okay, the names of your project change. You can change the name of the repository. You can change few things. So you can add wikis, you can change the issues, you can change a lot of things. You can add collaborators also directly. Okay, I don't want to show you that right now, but um, because you have these uh, security things, you know, need to have another check on that, but you can add people there. It's through within the settings uh, interface. Um, you have what is called issue. We will discuss about that later, but here it's mostly to show you that um, it's how it looks like. If you have a repository that is already with content in it. Um, let me open the one we will use later. So open life science OLS 8. So that is the repository where we store currently. So you, you should already, you some of you may already have added their issues related to their project in this repository with OLS 8 repositories in the issues. Otherwise, uh, the main content of this repository in terms of files is uh, the different 
templates for the diff, the templates for the different nodes uh, of the of the different codes. And you can see that uh, we have that here uh, sorted. So we have a readme file that is displayed afterwards, which explain what is the content of this of this repository. So a repository will look like this uh, when it has content in it. So some files in it. You have also a board section here with a link, for example, uh, to the license here. If you remember the call of, la of, of last week, you, we discussed about license and, and they are displayed here. There is a link to the code of conduct and some other things here. And you can have release packages who, are, who contributed to that. So that is quickly an overview of what is a repository. Okay, yes, you created you. Congrats, you created your first repository. And everything that is, uh, for example, this um, uh, readme file has this .md, you see? It's called readme.md. If you use a, a doc, uh, you created a file on Word. When you export it, you should have file.doc or docx. So the extension is doc or docx. Here, the extension is md. md stands for markdown. And what is Markdown? Markdown is a simple markup language. I will show you how it looks like. So it's, um, for example, for this readme file, zoom in I again, looked at this readme file. Yes, I show, I realize <laughs> right now that it looks strange. Um, so it's um, it's a it's a markup language that uh, add where you add few things. So it's it's like a, it's text based um, file where you add some few things like this dash here and this dash will make it that this is a title of level one if you add two of them it's a title of level two and here level title of level two if you add something like bracket square bracket some text Another, you close a square bracket, you open a, a curly bracket, and you add something, it will make it like this text is a link to that part here. So that will be look like this. And if I go back, uh, GitHub render that automatically. Every time you open a file that is called .md on GitHub, it will automatically render it as it should. Like you see that it looks like a big title here. Uh, here, like a smaller title because it's a level two, level two title, level one. And then you see this, uh, you have a, this a links already that looks like this project and participant. You can click on that and it will redirect to, to something else there. So uh, Markdown is um, really, it's a simple uh, text markup language for quickly writing formatted text. So as I said, with either, um, with different levels, you can do even list by just putting uh, either a star or just a, a minus, and then you will get, to, you can make a bullet list, and et cetera. It's really great for blog documentation and even writing papers. Um, the OLS website, for example, is mostly written in Markdown and, and, and in the back. So uh, and most of the pages are written in Markdown and formatted afterwards. So, and especially for the post there. So it's, uh, it's used a lot. So, and as I said, GitHub can render that automatically and, and display how it should look like. Um, and the first thing you think you can do for your project is to create a readme file. So a readme file, you should have already an introduction about readme in one of the previous call. Um, it's like the landing page for the repository. So when people will, will go to your, to your GitHub repository, it, the readme file will be the first thing that they see. So you should add, um, add info about your project there, list task of, of, of what is there. Maybe name, you can also name the collaborator there, invite people for specific things. But you already, we already discussed about readme files earlier before. So a first exercise that you can have now is to create a readme file for your repository. So how do you do that? So you go back to your friendly collaborative party uh, things and you want to create 
readme file. So what you can do is to click here. Uh, you can click on get starting by creating a new file. Here you have this uh, small link there. Um, is it visible? Can you see it? And, and yeah, good. So you click there by creating a new file here. And the GitHub will redirect to is uh, something to edit. And the first things you need to do is to give a name to this file. So you click on readme, you name it readme.md. Um, you can usually readme is, read, is written in capital letter. It's just a um, standard things. You can write it in small. I think it will still manage. Uh, GitHub will still find it. It's just a, a good practice to, to put it in capital later there. And then you can write something. I have no idea. OK, this is, I can say, my first GitHub repository. So I put a title there. Yay. I put some text. Yay. I created. I get a repository. Uh, write whatever you want. It's for new, new now to, to do that. And you can even put uh, emojis. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you can do, um, OK, uh, here is a link to my, and I create a link, my awesome repository, repository, and I add a link to my repository, so I just copy the link on the top, and here I put a link to my repository. And if I want how to how it looks like, so here I'm in the edit mode, and if I click on the preview, I can see how it will look like if I submit that changes, so if I have this change in there. Um, so yes, you can create that, uh, write some text, edit the content, um, and you can write whatever you would like about your project. It can be your vision statement, the roadmap uh, for today. As a, so it's really simple. Mostly, please do just write that something like this. Really simple things. Just to test how Magdon play. Um, just checking what is yes there can you just put a stamp up or something when you are you manage to at least have something like that looks like me like me like this you have a, a readme where you started to type something in type if you want i can go back to that again to how to create a, a file. So you click on get starting by creating a new file here. And you can click on create a new file in your new repository. And then um, type readme.md here and type some content here in, in the readme part. I will just leave that page because I already have one open with that. Is it okay? Do you manage to have that? Or did I lose? I'm going to pause uh, the recording briefly, just so if people want to speak up, they yeah. can without being recorded. To continue. So next, now let's dive a bit in the GitHub vocabulary. So we will now discuss, I will just give the names right now and explain afterwards the concept. So the first concept we will uh, discuss is the concept of commits. Then we will talk about branch and fork, pull request and merge. That is probably terms you may, may have heard sometimes and didn't know what they're referred to. Hopefully, after that, it will be a bit more clear what is it. Uh, yeah, more than a bit, hopefully. Um, so let's dive into commits. Commits, it's like you want to save a version of your file. So you say, OK, at this time, um here is a commit so here is my version of my file and you add with the commits come with a message usually so it's like it's it should come with a message it should say okay this is my chain that i did it's the comment of my change so i created my readme file and 
And then on the side, I put a message, here is my readme file. Or I added more details about that if you change something in the file. So the commit is more like saving the version of the file. And thanks you for, don't worry if it's a lot of information. I'm sorry if it would be a lot of information. I'm sure it will be. We, we, you can take the time later to go through that again. My idea right now is that you have an idea about the concept and the concept start to, to come in your mind. And after it takes some time, I know that the learning curve for GitHub can be a bit feeling overwhelming. Breathe, take the time and, and, and to go back to the slide later. Also, or there is a lot of, of, of learning materials online also that we refer to, or you can find later. So I'm sorry if it's a lot of information, but it's needed to continue and be able to, to move forward. Um, yeah, so commits, it's a version. So you say, okay, this is my version of my file. Here is what I changed. It's the idea of, of, of commits. Then there is a concept of branch. Um, so branch is, so you, you have some versions. So you, you did some changes on your, on your files. And at some point, you have a divergence. So you want to make some change. So you have a main path of change of your file. But you, you want to diverge a bit to make some things that you are not completely sure if, if they work or you, you want to. To, to have the possibility that uh, yeah, yeah, you want to have a temporary place to work on something. A branch is like, is like that. It's like a slightly divergence from the main way of, of versioning the thing. And, and you do some slight change on the side temporarily. And hopefully at the end, you will put that back in the main content. So punch, it, it, you can think about something like this. So you have this here, you have a main, what is called the main pass that go this way. And then you have something on the side where you want to fix a bug, for example, or you want to develop a new feature. You want to add a new files, uh, but you need sometimes to elaborate on that before it goes into the main interface, for example. It's really usually a branch is temporary. I did the commit and it said preview code and blame. Okay, let's discuss about that on the chat later. Sorry. Uh, the commits, I didn't commit yet, so we didn't commit it yet. So let's talk about that. And a fork. Okay, we have the branch. Branch is where you are. You, you do divergence of your work based on the main on the main repository. A fork is like a copy of the repository that is independent. So for example, you want to take the, the read the you take this one, this OLS8, and you most of the people in this in this call don't have the the you should not be able to add a new file directly in that because you don't have, you are not added as collaborator for that repository. You don't have what is called the right access. So you cannot directly write in this repository. What you will need to do is doing a fork. So creating what is uh, forking this repository. So creating a separated copy of the repository where you have the right to change. And that is uh, some uh, it's a fork. It's, um, it's a copy of the repository that independent and where you can make the change. And then afterwards, the change you do on your fork, you can say, I want them back in the original repository. But the idea is forking is first creating a copy. You need to create a copy. So let's do that. Let's do creating a fork of, of the, ah, again, I'm, I'm really sorry. It's like, I don't know why my side are moving. Back Do you have like a space bar that's like stuck or something? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't have anything. <laughs> I know. So um, please 
go on this link, so open life size slash OLS8, I put that in the chat. You should then have something that looks like this. So it's, uh, as I said, it's a repository where we stored all the notes from the different calls in OLS8. And the first thing you need to do, what we want to do is you to fork. So you want to create your own copy of, uh, of its repository that go inside your GitHub account. So you click on this fork button here on the top. And GitHub will tell you, do you want to create a fork? What is the name? I would say keep the same name, OLS8. And, and then you can click on create the repository. And you see that the owner here will not be open life science anymore, but it should be you now. So it means that you will have all the right to make changes there. So you click and you create a fork. And then you should, it will say, I'm forking the repository. It will take two seconds. And then you will have something that is called, is, what is your username slash OLS8 minus eight. And for me, it's beba2 slash OLS8. And it says afterwards that it's for, forked from the original repository. So GitHub still keep um, an, um, history of the provenance, where it come from. So that your repository is a copy of that one. Um, let me check. So let's go back to OLS 8. No, not this one, this one, sorry. I got confused. And I see that I have seven forks that has been made. So seven of you forked this repository. No, I don't want to create a new, new fork. I just wanted to see who forked it. Okay, only me, great. Uh, sorry, I'm confused. And fork the repository and create, check that the repository is creating on your repository. Can I have some up or something to say if you manage to create this uh, fork of the GitHub repository of the OLS8. So I have some, yes, so I have four, five, six, good, seven. Okay, let's continue slowly then. So you created your fork. Great. Um, and then why do you do a fork? As I said, it's to, to make some changes on your own if you don't have the right access. And then once you have these changes and you did the fork, you work on your copy. And what you want to do is to submit to, to that the change you made locally are going back into the original copy, the original one, not the copy, but the original one. Like for example, in this case, you make changes in your fork of OLS 8, and then you want this change to be applied to the OLS, Open Life Science slash OLS 8. And what it's called here, it's called a pull request. You want the change from your repository to be pulled um, into and put into the original one. So it's a pull request. It's a really bad word. People are always afraid about this word Oculus, and they are really afraid that it will make it's just something really complicated. Hopefully, it's, it, I, I will try to make it not too complicated. Um, but the idea is Oculus is to submit changes into a, a repository. So Oculus is like your request to combine the work from a fork repository or from a branch and to put that into the main repository in the main branch of the main repository. So what you did, for example, you have this, ah, really, I don't understand what's going on. You have uh, this main branch, you have something and you, you did a, fax, a fix, a bug fix. What you want to, if you want to merge that, that the bug fix goes into the main uh, the branch. Um, your, the change you did uh, there. So that is somehow the idea of a pull request. 
And when you do the pull request, so you submit your change, and what's going, what is happening usually is that uh, one of the owner or one of the authors or one of the main collaborators in the original repository will decide if they want to merge it or if it's or if it's not ready, for example. And and the pull request is give an interface to make it quite easy. So give especially so GitHub interface for pull requests make you possible to comment on the pull request to say, okay, this change maybe could be better. Oh, great. Thanks a lot for this this submission, this changes. They looked great. Let's merge it directly. Or can you slightly change that? Or can you or the owner can also make some slight suggestion directly in the code or in the in the in the file. So it's really uh, one, I think one of the most powerful things on GitHub is this interface for pull request that make collaboration much more easier. So how does that work? Let's um, go back to your OLS 8 fork here and go in the folder. So you see this week five folder here. You can see it hopefully. If you click here, you will have uh, another folder opening where you see week five minus uh, week minus uh, zero five minus snow dot md, and if you open that here, it's a it's a markdown file where we have uh, the template for the notes for today. It's if you see it's similar to what is uh, in the in the notes from you see on Framapad. What we want you to do is now to make the change so you can edit that file. You are in your fork, so you can edit this file. You should have the right to do that. You are in your fork. Don't try to do that on, on uh, GitHub slash Open Life Science slash OLS 8. Do it on the fork that you just created um, and click on edit this file here. I will redo it again later just to be sure that you follow me. Um, you edit this file, and, and what you want, we want you to do is in the roll call here, you add your name. So you say, so my name is Berenice, my project is OLS, my social handles are Bebatu, and my emoji mood is smile. Okay, that's what I do. Um, so let's do it again. I will show you again. So I'm on my fork from OLS 8. I go first, I click on this week five folder. I click on week five notes.md. Then I click on this small uh, uh, pencil icon, which is edit this file. And then I go to the introducing yourself and I add my name here and project, et cetera, et cetera. So I already did it. So I just leave this page, but that's what I do. So you do that. And what is the next step? Just to be sure that I don't forget, um, you add your name. And the things you do afterwards is you want to commit this change. So you, you want to say, okay, this is my change. So you click on this big green button on the top that is really like really fully visible. So you click on this commit change. So you will create a commit where you say you add a message. So um, added Berenice to the roll call. You can put another message what if you want. So you say that. Um, you can even add, um, if you have a lot of changes, you can also add the more text because usually the commit message should not be too long. It should be quite short. Just explain quickly what are the changes. And then if you want to expand, describe more what are the changes, you, you usually have this explanation, extended description there. And, uh, oops, sorry, I got, you do that, oops, you, Commit change here. You commit change to the main branch. It should be okay. Uh, no, creator. I'm sorry. I'm lost. I don't remember what I wanted to. 
Couldn't change, yes. Um, it just, it just either is fine, right? Yeah, it should be okay. It just, um, I'm always not sure because I have the right to modify the OLS, uh, the Open Life Science. I'm always never sure what are what are the view that you have because I have a slightly different view because I have the owner the all the right in the original one. So you click on commit change here, what? And if you do the commit change, now you should see in your notes here that you have your introducing yourself here. You should have the change that are uh, added. Is it the case? Can, can you, you remove all the yes and asking? Then can you add uh, plus one or something if it, you manage to do have, at least you committed you made the com you made a commit with the change in your work call. Is it the case? I see. Or I see only four. Good, thanks. Uh, let me check. So you have now these uh, nodes where you made some changes. Um, so you added yourself to the roll call. Um, one thing is once you did that and you want to create a pull request to submit your change. So there is uh, normally different ways of doing that. And one thing you can do is uh, you say here, it tells me that my branch is one commit her head to regarding open life science slash main, uh, minus main. And what you can do is you can click on contribute. And if you click on contribute, it will open, you can open a pull request directly there. Um, the other way we could have done is when we make the commit the change, we could have created a branch and create a pull request directly from that. It's why I got a bit confused also. It's usually what I usually do is create a, bra a branch and do the pull request directly from that. Um, but there is always different way of doing that. And there should be another way that is, if you are on the main branch, it's strange, it doesn't find it. But um, if you go on the main repository, sometimes you also have the pull request with a, a yellow uh, bar that tells you you can contribute directly and submit a pull request. Um, so create, yes, you. Thank you. I just wanted to just really uh, quickly reiterate one concept um, that if everyone, if you've made a change now, on your repository, if you go and look at the OLS 8 repository, that yeah. change won't be there. So the reason that we're making that pull request is to try and synchronize everything and get your changes back in. So Berenice is looking at the main one and you can see there's no one there, even though everyone's already saved things. Um, and that's why this is called a distributed version control because every person's copy is legitimate. It's a, it's a real copy. Um, so what she's talking you through now is getting your changes back into the main copy by asking politely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that. So what you want when you want to, to have your local, I mean, the copy that you had on your fork to be put back in the main repository. What you click is here, here, when you have these branches, one committer head, you click on contribute and you click on open pull request. Yeah, and then what it will tell you, it will compare the change based on, on which repository. So you want from Open Life Science, um, from your fork into Open Life Science one. And it will pre, it can already fill uh, some message for, for you already. So I'm, but my added, added Bernice, and it will put what are the change that happened there. So, and then you click on create the pull request here. It will create a pull request um, that you can see directly. Um, if I go in the main repository, I can see that I have one pull, I have a pull request here that is uh, added to the role names into the role code here. So my pull request that I just created there. So again, uh, how do I do that? I go to, again to mine to my fork. 
theta two or ls eight. So on the fork where you have your change, you say that you have it's one commit ahead. You can click on contribute, open the pull request, and then you can fill the the, the form that is there and clicking on create the pull request, and you will have a pull request. Okay, yeah, I didn't give a description, please. If, especially if it's the first time you contribute to a repository, please usually add some message. Hi, I've made best changes, uh, just that it's more it's, it's more friendly usually. It's it's easier to start a discussion if there is some some point to discuss. And I see currently that we have already uh, four pull requests that has been submitted. So I will take the first one that I were submitted. So um, I don't know who is, uh, so Alet, I think you added your name and you see Alet put a short description about what is going on. Then you have one commit. So the commit we just submitted before. So it tell you here the number of commits. So this is the standard view for a pull request. And here you have, if you have good file changes, uh, you see uh, you, you have the different what, ha what happened. And you can, as I said, why is it great for uh, GitHub is really great is you can see all the changes. And if I click on this plus, I can add a comment like, thanks for adding your self here. So it's, and it will, uh, uh, you can add a comment and add a single comment, for example, and it will display that. So it will look like a conversation that we have. So if I go back to the conversation, I see that, okay, I reviewed here and I had a comment. I can also make another comments uh, here. Thanks a lot for your contribution. And then I can say it looks great let's merge it and so merging merging means um i want i will me because i'm an owner of the repository i'm uh, i have the right access me not you probably not all, uh, not few people only maybe few people in this in this call can say, okay, I, I, I accept this change and I want them back in the main one. So I merge this pull request. I click on confirm and I merge this pull request. And if I look now in the main repository, if I go to uh, the week five, so I'm on open life science uh, slash OLS eight. If I go on week five nodes, and if I scroll down, I should see Alet now. So Alet is now, the changes from Alet are there now. So it's uh, the concept of merging. So I, I, I reviewed and I merged the pull request. Uh, so that is the ID. So make a pull request, you can change the title, leave a comment, it's what we discussed right now. And review is what I showed you. So you can review the changes, um, make some comments, and then, the users with right access can approve and merge the pull request. So the idea of merging is to combine the work from two different branches or from two repositories into the, the central one. Um, and it's the same as I just showed right now here. Another really great features of, of uh, GitHub is issues. So issues are like post messages. It can be used for reporting uh, errors, propose new ID, uh, save notes from meetings, for example, or invite discussions. So you have a either, like a bit like a pull request where you can give a either and a descriptions. And you already, if you already create your issue on OLS 8 repository, you already created an issue. So. We will not go too much in details about that. What is the difference between issue and pull request? So issue are mostly for proposing ideas for possible change and invite discussions. They before making changing with the pull request. And for the pull request propose the changes, you can discuss that, iterate about that. And then at the end, the idea of the pull request of most of the pull requests is to merge the change into the project.
did Berenice just freeze? <laughs> I think she did. I was like, why is she being quiet? Um, let's give her a moment, see if she comes back. If not, I can swoop in. Uh, the question is, did we make her computer angry or is the internet gone? Okay, I'm with you. Sorry? You ask me a question, I don't hear. Oh, I was I was just um, shooting the breeze, saying I don't know whether um, Berenice's internet is gone or if it's a computer. Ah, there we go. She's fully gone. All right, folks. Uh, is your brain mushy yet? It's okay to say yes. <laughs> um, but I can see all those pull requests have been coming in. Um, quick question. Does everyone feel like they understand the purpose of making a pull request? Nice. I've got nods and I've got check marks and I've got answers in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am going to uh, very quickly show you making a website. Uh, so right now you can turn your readme page into a website page with like three clicks. And that means that uh, at this point, if you want to, um, what's the words I'm looking for here? Oh yeah, if you know Markdown and you've clicked that and you've enabled a website, you can create a website so that people can say, hey, here's my project or here is my resume. Um, and it's, it's a really useful skill and a reason to practice your GitHub skills as well. Uh, so I'm going to really quickly get the right screen up. Of course, I was very well prepared and I already had this up, which means, as you know, I actually did not. So I'm just <laughs> bear with me one moment. Um, OK, um, I let's find my friendly. In fact, let me share my screen now. Uh, this looks good. OK, right. You can see my GitHub. I've got nods. You're beautiful. Uh, fantastic. OK, so. Thank you, Dar. Um, I am going to pull up my copy of Friendly Collab Party. Friendly Collab. Oh, no, I wanted my copy. I love how we can see like Sophia did this training at some point in the past and she's got one of these. Um, <laughs> uh, but let me get mine. Uh, OK, let's try this again. If I go to me and I go to me. Uh, nope, I'm just looking at the wrong repository entirely. It's only slightly embarrassing as I record this on the Internet. Um, Okay, why is this so hard to find? Maybe I've deleted mine, you know. <laughs> All right, okay. Hold with me 30 seconds whilst I try and find one for me. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do it right now. I can do this. Just like Berenice has demonstrated, uh, but one more time. So, plus new repository. Friendly dash collab dash party. Okay, you're going to be like that computer. First, you won't let me find it, and now you tell me it exists. OLS 8. Fantastic. Okay, this is just mean. Uh, I think because we've done this training, well, this will be the eighth time. I, I have like about 35 copies of this, it feels like. Anyway, create. You've all done this, so you're doing great. And I will quickly, quickly create my very own README. And look, mum, my own website. No hands. OK, commit changes. So this is just a nice little reminder of getting started, making the commits in a super speedy way. But now I say, oh, I want my own website. I don't have it yet. So what I will do, I'm going to go to settings over on the top right click on settings, and then I'm going to hunt for pages over here on the left. 
pages. Uh, and so it has a bunch of settings and I'm like, well, I, I think I want this one here. I want, I'm going to tell it where it says branch. So it says GitHub pages is currently disabled. Select a source below to enable GitHub pages. And GitHub pages is just their fancy word for how to make your own website hosted on GitHub. So I'm going to click on where it says none, and then I'm going to click on main. So you can do this on your OLS 8 repository, or you can do it on your friendly collab repository or any other repository you make. Um, it'll, all, it'll all work. Uh, but now I've, I've selected main from the branches in pages, and then I click save. Uh, and so now it takes a minute or two while it's thinking about it. Um, but if I want to know the URL, like literally that's all I had to do. And I theoretically have uh, a web page uh, that's available. It says your GitHub pages site is currently being built. So computer's thinking basically, but I'm gonna just refresh, click on the refresh button and see if it's done. No, or maybe it is, I don't know, come on. This is uh, that fun thing. We just sit here and tap your watch and wait for it to finish. It normally takes like, you know, 20, 30 seconds, which it can be a bit irritating if you're doing a bunch of updates and you keep on waiting for it to refresh, but it's not the end of the world. Um, there's also been times when we have been um, doing this training and GitHub has decided to break, <laughs> which is just super convenient. And it's like, we only needed 90 minutes, just 90 minutes, but no GitHub. Now is the time to break. Thank you. Ah, there we go. I've refreshed it again. And you can see that the screen has changed. So it says your site is live at, and that's my full name, johanna.github.io, friendly collab party. So I can click on visit site. Oh my God. If I post that in the chat, you can see it. And if you have done the same, you now have a real life website on the internet. Uh, so I'm going to stop the recording. Exactly what I wanted to say. So sorry for the dropout with the internet. So we already saw the last things we did was creating the pull request you manage. Thanks. I saw a lot of pull requests open on OLS 8. So yeah, you did it. You managed. You did the thing that is frightening most of the people, to be honest. Creating this pull request is something that a lot of people are really afraid of doing. And especially the first time you did it, great, great, good, thanks. Um, one things you can, few things you can are really great with um, with GitHub is also there is a lot of uh, features that are uh, in issues and pull requests that are great. Where can I show you? The, oh, I can show you the OLS website. For your information, the OLS website is hosted on GitHub, surprising. Um, and if you see, so we have, uh, it's also a lot of markdown file. It's a Jekyll base. So if you are interested because you just learned how to create a website, if you want to do something much, 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 much more complex, you can have a look at the, at the OLS website, but it's just uh, an idea. It's Jekyll, it's, uh, you can host that on GitHub page, it's really great. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you is the fact that you can label issues. Yes, I don't have any labels on this. Great, looks great. Ah, one thing, for example, um, here we have an issue where you say we should be good to expand the consultancy page on OLS. And then what things we could do is we can assign people. Okay, say, okay, Patricia and Debs, you need to work on it. It would be good if you can assign that. And what things we can do is adding a comms uh, label. So we can add different labels to help uh, filtering the, the, the page, uh, filtering the labels or the pull requests. That is really great uh, when you have a lot of issues, a lot of pull requests, a lot of, of things to then a filter. I can show you on one repository where we have a lot of that. Um, it's an outside OLS world things, use case. Um, I'm in a repository where we have uh, more than 100 of different issues. And you want to filter to say, OK, I want to know all the ones that are based on new features. If you add a label, you can filter on that. You can filter on all the labels that you want, the one that are related to climate or things. And same for the pull request. So that is 
think the main view is the best view is the pull request. Yeah, you see, we have uh, labels for every pull request, so that is easy to identify what are the, the different pull requests are related to. Um, that is just a few features that are really useful for um, GitHub. Um, you can tag people for comment, asking them for review. Um, that really helps for the collaborative aspect of, of GitHub. Uh, I see a comment. Yeah, Galaxy, sorry. Yeah, it's my my other hat, not OLS one, is the Galaxy one for the people that know Galaxy in bioinformatics. Um, and so congratulations, you heard about commit, you created your first commit, you heard about branch and fork, you created your first fork, you created your first pull request, and I merged at least one pull request. So you heard a lot about a lot of concept today, and that can be really frightening at the beginning. Um, and there is a lot more features of GitHub that you can try on your own. Um, just if you have questions, don't worry if you didn't get all the terms right now, and yet, and if, if it's still quite unclear, um, we created a glossary that you can check afterwards with all most of the terms and a short text about that, explanation about that. So you have two pages of glossaries. You can uh, take your time later to go through the slide again. The slide will stay. So if it's not tomorrow, if it's in one year, it's okay. The slide will be still there for you. And they will be linked from the GitHub repository, from the OLS website, sorry, <laughs> from the OLS website, you will find all the links. You can also watch the recording again later. Um, also, the, the recording will be also again shared on the website later. You can play around and ask, clarify, and ask any question uh, as you say. You can ask them on Slack. There is a, a channel that is called GitHub minus OLS. Please feel free to ask any question there. Or also, as we said, if you want to join, you can join one of the co-working sessions that are happening on the Fridays. If you have questions there, feel free to draw to join and say, asking me, even if you think it's a stupid question, there is no stupid questions. So please, I really encourage you to ask questions. Don't get stuck for hours, especially for hours. Don't get stuck, ask your question when you ask some. And it can be just a concept that is a bit unclear in your mind. And you miss one slight connection that can help you to understand everything else afterwards. So really, really, I encourage you to ask questions. Um, and follow on with your I mean, material. So there is afterwards some a lot of other slides that we put. No, we don't have the time to cover them. Uh, for example, there is a things where you can use project board, like it's like, like it's a Kaban based board that you can have on GitHub that helps to to uh, organize project uh, your your repository. There is uh, more other things about pull requests and output files, etc. Um, I will not cover that because we are also running out of time. Uh, so. Sorry, and I need to drop out for another meetings to give another presentation uh, right now. So sorry, I really need to leave right now. You, I hand over to you. And, and also I'm on Slack. So if you really want, you can feel free to ask me also anything, even if it's on DM, feel free to ask message, direct message if you, if you want. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Berenice. And I stop sharing. Yeah, okay. and sorry, I have really have to, to run for the normal meeting. Sure. And... Sure. Be gone. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. I'm trying to stop that recording. Why is it not? Oh, yeah, there we go.